four basic ways of doing this. We're going to do them in all new ways. The first one is by asking questions. When you ask a crummy question, what kind of answer do you get? Crummy answer. Crummy answer. What's the worst question that we all ask every day? How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> Don't ask that question anymore. That's why I already primed your mind. I said ask people what's the highlight of their day, what's going well. You know, what are they most excited about? Ask better questions, get better answers. When you ask how are you, do you build any rapport with people? No. no. Zero, right? Zero rapport. Nothing. If I tell you fine, good, okay, we have no new level of relationship there. Ask better questions. That's the first way to build rapport. Second way is by listening intently. Not just listening, because we all do that, but listening intently as if you're preparing to listen, as if it matters to you. So as soon as you write that down, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think right now, back to when you were a child. Back to one of your favorite childhood memories. If you had a crummy childhood, you could think of at least one memory that worked out well for you. It could have been 10 years ago, it could have been 20, it could have been 5, it could have been last week, if you're still considering yourself a kid at heart. Think of your favorite childhood memory. See it on the movie screen. See it playing in front of your eyes. Listen to the sounds that you heard, all the laughter, all the giggles, the good times, the compliments, the appreciation. Feel how you felt in that moment. If you had a smile on your face then, put a smile on your face now. If you were laughing then, laugh now. I want you to experience this right now, and I want you to remind yourself of what it was like to be in that memory. Now I want you to prepare this memory as if it's a 30-second story you're going to share with your partner. So if it's not a memory you want to share out loud, change that story now. <laughs> <laughs> So go ahead, uh, as you've already done, go ahead, as you've already done, open your eyes, turn to the person on your left or right, your partner. So you may have three. Here's what I'd like you to do. This one instruction, one instruction only. I want you to share your favorite childhood memory with your partner, but I want you to keep one thing in mind. I want you to share your stories simultaneously. You have 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Okay, stop. I'm, I'm getting some evil stare. It's not working? No, it was very hard. Why not? Still so can't can't concentrate. Can't, 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 can't listen and talk at the same time. Hard it's hard to concentrate, you. right? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even make eye contact because I felt like yeah. I'm not listening exactly. to her. How can I make eye contact with her because I'm not paying attention to what rude, she's saying? seems rude, right? And I wanted to listen to what she was saying, so I was sort of drawing mine out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, me too. So would you say it's physically impossible then to listen for comprehension? I mean, we hear the difference between hearing and listening is comprehension. To listen for comprehension and talk at the same time. Yes. yes. Physically impossible, yes. right? Yes. yes. But each and every one of you are doing this every day of your lives, mm -hmm. except you're not talking out loud. You're in your heads. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You've answered their question before they asked it. You've judged what they're about to say. You know, you finished their sentences. Yeah, don't do that. Give them a chance. It's called pausing. It's called reading. It's called listening. Who knew? We're doing this each and every day of our lives. How do you feel when people really listen to you? Have you ever had that happen before? Like people actually listen. They're totally present for you. There's nothing more important than you on the entire face of the planet. How do you feel? It makes you feel oh, special. special right? Feel Good. special, right? Important. You feel important. You feel like they like care. They care. They care. How did you feel right now? Confused. Disoriented. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> it didn't work out so well. Scale of 1 to 10, how much rapport did you build? 10 being best friend, 1 being worst person on the planet. How much rapport did you build? Scale of 1 to 10. Zero. 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 So scale of 1 to 10, we got zero. <laughs> so it does nothing. It's not even on the scale. Yeah. Zero. It doesn't work because if you're not listening, you build zero um, rapport. what I learned about listening. Number one, listen with the intent of listening, not responding. It doesn't mean that you can't respond, it just means that you're not planning it. That your plan is walking into the conversation to listen with the intent of listening, not responding. My wife did that with me six, seven years ago. I came down, I had what you call one heck of a day. I came back from work, I had a story to tell for five hours. For five hours she didn't move. She sat there, she listened. She said, oh, and she was supposed to say, oh. She said, ah, oh, and she was supposed to say, ah. Uh. And she didn't go to the bathroom once. Five hours, I married that woman. It is true. <laughs> now, it doesn't happen like that all the time, but if you can go back to a place where you listen with the intent of listening, that's what you do when you're meeting a client for the first time. You really listen. 
you do seek to understand. I told my wife we would have the most perfect relationship if we always pretended we were just dating for the first time. You know, the honeymoon era, the honeymoon period. You treat each other with the utmost respect. You give 100%. You give everything you got. You buy flowers for each other. You call each other all the time. You know, you turn around, you text them, I miss you already, right? If you could treat your clients like that, your relationships, the people who are the most important to you, how much better would that relationship be? Whether it's client, colleague, kids, whoever. Think about that. It's about first listening with the intent of listening, not responding. Next, I also learned this. Listening is not waiting for your turn to speak. This is a lesson a lot of us need to learn. It's not waiting for your turn to speak. It's not saying, wait, wait, I got something to say. I got something to say. What you're basically saying is what you have to say is not important enough because I have something to say. It's not waiting for your turn to speak. This is actually one of my participants taught me that. Third note, we tend to hear what we are listening for. That's where a lot of breakdowns in communication happen as well. Next note, we only hear what we understand. We only hear what we understand. If we don't understand it, it doesn't make any sense to us. We're not really listening. We're not really paying attention. It doesn't matter at all. We only hear what we truly understand. So if you don't understand, ask questions so that you can really hear it, so that you can listen. And the last note, listen for the deeper meaning. You know, they say listen between the lines, read between the lines, same idea. Listen for the deeper meaning. What are they really saying? When my wife comes home and I ask her, how are you? How was work? And she goes, oh, it was okay. What does that mean? It wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. It probably wasn't okay either, yeah. right? If I listen to the deeper meaning, I'm going to say, all right, well, help me understand. What was that day like? You know, what, what was not okay about it? And I do this with her now. I made the mistake many, many years ago. It's probably four or five years ago where I asked her, how was your day? And up and down and up and down. It was a good day. It was a bad day. It was a good day. It was a bad day. I didn't understand how the day was. So I had to interrupt her. I said, I'm sorry. I don't understand. You know, I'm not understanding. So come back to we only hear what we understand. That's, there's only a couple times where you can interrupt somebody or you should. One of them is when you don't understand what they're saying. <coughs> so I said, please help me understand. Was this a good day or a bad day? She said, oh, it was a good day. I said, okay. Now I understand why I'm listening. That's what the male energy wants from the females. Male energy wants to understand why we're going to watch this movie. Female energies, they want to tell the story. And so it's good to understand the two differences. So we understand what is that deeper meaning between what they're saying. When you ask a guy how his day was, what does he say? Fine. Good, fine, okay. That's his whole day. It's good, it's fine, whatever. And that's it. One word answer, because he got to the point. Next question, please. It's usually how a typical male responds, typical male. Typical female gives you the stories. So it's about understanding what's the deeper meaning and how do they communicate with us. We, treat, we teach people how to treat us. So how do they want to be treated? Third, seek similarities. <laughs> I just like this picture. Seek similarity. <laughs> <laughs> we do too. However, however political you are or you aren't, <laughs> I'm not going either way. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, and there are a couple of ways to do this. So I want to give you one way to do this right now that is the most amazing way. Uh, if you saw, if you Googled me or any of my other videos, if you saw them, you'll see I actually do this on video on, and it's on YouTube as well. It's one of the most ex fascinating things. You can build rapport with anyone in five minutes. You can build rapport with someone you have rapport with even better in five minutes or less. So I'm going to share with you how to do this. So what I want you to do is just picture with me in your mind a house or a home. Whatever it is, a house or a home, the first thing you see is a what? Construction. House or a home. I'm going to give you the answers before. <laughs> yes. house or home. Right? What's the first thing you see? House. A house, right? And then the front door opens and a whole bunch of people come out. Little kids, adults, all kinds of people come out. And the adults come over here and the kids come over here. The kids talk about all the things the kids talk about and they play and they have a good time. They entertain themselves. They play toys. They have fun, right? The adults come over here and they talk about all the things adults talk about. Work and chores and work and pets and work and bills and work and they talk a lot about work, don't we? Right? And then you see the clouds blown out of the way and you see the word vision written across the sky. The first thing you saw is a... House. house, right? And the front door opens and? People. People come out. Kids and adults. The kids came over here and talked about? Kids, kids stuff. Kids stuff. Kids stuff kids fun fun stuff. stuff. They played, entertained themselves. The adults came over here and did what? Talked about, about, about work. About work, right? <laughs> That's what we do. And then you see the word? Vision. Vision. If you can remember those five things, you can build rapport with anyone and everyone in five minutes. Forget the words you use. Forget your tone. Do what they do with the body. 
Be a chameleon with your body. Emotion creates emotion. The way you move is the way you feel. You don't have to match their tone. You don't have to match their words. If you match their body, you instantly become more like them. I'll tell you why in a moment. So if you walk into a group of people and there's 15 people standing around in a circle and they're all doing this, and you walk in there like this, what are they going to think about you? That you think you're Superman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or Peter Pan. Right? You do it this way. Right? You're an outsider. You're totally different than everybody else. But if you walk in there just like this, you're just like them. It doesn't mean you have to be like them. But you now blend in. You become more like them. You're not an outsider. You have something in common. We like people who are like us. We figured that out before. Now you actually did it. Subconsciously. You don't even know it. So wouldn't it make sense then if you want someone to like you more, do what they do with your body? Wouldn't that make sense to consciously do that? You do it long enough, you don't even think about it. I do this all the time and I catch myself. I look exactly like them and I realize I did that, but I've been training myself to do this. When you do it long enough, you become just like these people. And then when you talk, double to double it up, when you talk about values, what's most important to people, rapport shoots through the roof. Personal example, showed you my house. We just moved into a house. Uh, we don't know anybody in the neighborhood. Nobody. So our neighbors invited us over. There's a guy, Tim, his wife, Jen, and they have a little son who was two at the time. We have nothing in common with them. They're a couple of years older than us. They have a kid. They've lived here for four years. We're like, this isn't going to work. At least that's what my wife thought. Me being personal, professional development coach, I said, I have a plan. So just follow my lead. So we're walking over. My wife said, this is going to be really strange or awkward. You know, they're cooking dinner for us. They don't even know what we like, what allergies we have. This is going to be strange. I know. You see the face? That's the face I made. I was like, ah, I'm allergic to the world here. So not going to work out. And I said, I have a plan. Don't worry, sweetheart. Three, four hours go by. We're walking home. My wife said, really like them. We have so much in common with them. And all I thought was, I know. <laughs> Dude, this is what I did. I took them through this process, but it doesn't seem like a process because it's what people want to talk about. So the first thing I asked them, I said, how long have you lived here? What made you buy this house? You know, what are the neighborhood? What's the neighborhood like? What are the people like in the area? And it would slowly flow right through the conversation. You know, do you, do you have family in the area? Where, where did you move from? You know, where do your parents live? Do they live close? Do they help you take care of your kid? And before we knew it, we had everything in common. We were best friends. This guy played basketball with every Sunday. If, you, if you're at a loss for a conversation, if you're talking with somebody and there's a dead silence and there's quiet, jump right into this. What's the first thing you see? House. House. And then what front door opens and? People. People. people come out. What kind of people? Family. Kids and adults. Adults. Kids and adults, right? Family and friends. And then the kids come over here and do what? Entertain themselves. Entertain themselves. What do you like to do for fun? And then adults talk about? Work. 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 Uh, and then all the other stuff adults talk about. And then the clouds form the word vision. And then the <laughs> word vision, right? And that's just asking all the questions in future tense. When you have enough rapport, you can ask them. You know, do you plan on living in this house for a couple of years? I asked Tim. Because, you know, I like him. I want to know if he's going to stay for a little while. You know, you don't want to ask people, do you plan on staying in this marriage very long? That's not the right question to ask. <laughs> the fourth one is get to yes. Get to yes. You want to build rapport, get to yes. We call it the Socratic method. You get people to say the word yes because people love hearing what word? Yes. Yes. And they hate hearing what word? No. 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 We're grown. We're grown. We're brought up. We're raised in a pessimistic society. You know, I told my wife, one of the things I don't want to do is tell her kid no all the time. There are so many other ways of saying no, because by the age of two, what's the kid's favorite word? No. 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 And that's not what we want to hear. You don't like it when clients say no. You don't like it when your colleagues say no. We don't like it when we say no. When you get to yes, you build more rapport. No breaks rapport.